We're going to do that in just a second, but I just thank God for what I feel outside. Well, I thank God for the Holy Spirit and I feel moving. God has something mighty in store tonight, friends. I'm telling you. God is stirring His people. God is stirring His children. Uh, his, his younger children. We said, don't have the kids having a, a, a club that's meeting after church to discuss what the preacher was talking about. So they're going to start meeting after church and they're getting together to talk about what the preacher preached. And they're telling me that today. And I, I just thought, wow, you know, I was excited that they wanted to talk further about what the man of God was preaching, but they got some burdens on their heart for some of their other uh, friends that don't know the Lord. And they got some, they got some burdens on their heart. And isn't that good that that God's even carrying over to our kids. But I, I just praise Him. I praise Him for uh, all that He's done. I, I'm glad to meet another Christian. I still know I got to meet Brother Dustin's grandfather today or meet his family. And he's passing away. He's kind of in a coma. But he was a preacher. His name was Melvin. And I got into Melvin's room. I'm not lying. I walked into this room and felt the Spirit of God. It greeted me as I walked into the room. At just certain places, Lester was talking about that this morning in Sunday school. But when I walked in, I felt God. But uh, they began to tell me about what he what he preached when he was a preacher and some of the sermons. And they got to share some of the, the stories with me. And I laid hands on him. And when I did, we began to get to pray. The Lord showed up. And I told him out, out in the, outside here at the prayer room, boy, I just felt God. And I got all, almost envious of him. I thought in just a few minutes, he's going to take his last breath. He's going to see Jesus face to face. And I almost got envious of that fact that in a moment, he... He's, he's run his race. He's finished his course. Yep. And I thought, Lord, he's going to see you face to face. Oh, church, one of these days I'm going to see you face to face. I'm just glad that I'm ready. But I, I told him outside, I'm ready for I'm ready for me, for myself, to be a heart on fire for God in a way that I've never been. I, I told God to remove anything in my life that need not be there because I want to give it all to God. Fully submit myself, commit myself to the Lord and let God just have His way in my life and make me what He, what he wants to make me. I praise Him. It's going to be in the Lord's house. Can't wait to see what God's going to do. I thank God that five souls saved this morning. Well, that ought to blow our socks off. Do you know that five souls that was walked in here at lost walked out saved. We're going to sing a song about that tonight. And let me say this. The song is written old-time religion. They didn't get religion this morning. They got old-time salvation. Amen. And that old-time salvation is good enough for me. So if you stand to your feet tonight, take the church hymnal and turn to page 351. We're going to sing uh, the old-time salvation. Amen. So get you a hymn book there and turn to 351. Have our ushers to come. If they would, come on up. Noah and Canaan. You know what? Cain and Grayson, or however how many wants to come at the name. And uh, let's, let's pray over offering tonight. Pray that God just bless and the service tonight. Pray for Cody as, as he stands. And uh, let's, just, let's just have a good time in the Lord tonight. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to ask, uh, Lord, will you open this up with prayer, buddy, and pray for offering? Lord, I thank you for this day. I pray for the offering. I pray for Cody. I pray for Cody. Lord, I pray just keep this in Praise the Lord, pal.
ahead and sing it. I remember the time we gathered, we talked about it out at the altar a minute ago, we'd sing, we get together for a 24 hour prayer service. We had three or four sheets of paper that would lay across this altar. We would meet, we'd pray all night long here at the church. One of those, my voice good, it's good. We'd meet, people would sign up for an hour, we'd come in and pray. But I can remember, and I was thinking back to it myself. And I got to a name, and I remember a bunch of names on that sheet because there's a bunch of marbles. <laughs> that name in North Carolina, we don't have a lot of marbles in North Carolina, evidently. I never know a marble. I got to Tennessee. When I got over here on that sheet of paper, there's a whole lot of marbles. One of those names was Cody Marble. It said, Pray for his salvation. And I remember calling this thing out the Lord many times. I didn't know him, didn't know what he looked like. At that time, I did. Everything was written before that. I said, "Lord, save Cody Marlowe. I don't know him, but I know, I know his dad, his mom, his stepmom, his whole family. God, I want to see him saved. God, would you save him? Well, God did. And God took him, took it one step further, didn't he? He put him into the army of the Lord, and he, he enlisted him into the ministry. And I was praise. And this, this song kid comes to mind. The best thing in Cody Marlowe's life." was day except the Lord because it's the greatest day of my life too. Not, not the day he was called to preach but the day that the Lord reached way down below the bottom. Yes, sir. Brought him up out of the miry yes, clay and set his feet on solid rock. You know, it wasn't the day that I got, got married or got out of school or not even the day on September 30th of 1998 God called me to preach. I was 18 years old. But the greatest day was I sat in a church house in North Carolina, Mount Calvary, for the Baptist. 8th of January, 1989, the man of God preached out of Matthew chapter 14 on Peter walking on the water. I heard him say, man, if this come on to me, come on. There's one word that Jesus said in that passage of Scripture. You look it up. It's in red. It says, come. That's all Jesus said to Peter. He said, come. He said, Lord, bid me that I may come to you on the water. Jesus said, come. I heard him say, come, and I, I went that day. That's the greatest thing in Cody's life, too. And that's what this song says. Lord, you're the best thing that ever happened to me. I, I just praise God. I praise God for this night. This is the night that we all just celebrate. Amen. Amen. Amen.
felt it, church. Praise God. Praise God for His Spirit. I like it. I got right by myself down to Elizabeth in the hospital, and I, I told them about seven minutes ago, I was coming back up Cap Creek. Hadn't been back up there. <coughs> a little while seemed like since I was on that motorcycle last Friday, that storm come through. When I got to the top of the hill by myself, the Lord just like He sat down and He said, Right here, old buddy, I can took you out so I can. So you can be gone tonight, friend. They'd already had your funeral, but now. Well, I tell you, church, I just felt God come down and God said that I spared you for a reason. Oh, you realize that, man, and I left you here because you ain't done yet. You just right. getting started. I believe God's going to work for you. And I said, Lord, whatever the, whatever is a hindrance in my life, whatever's draining me, I, of the Spirit of God that should be there, God, I want it out. I want to be a heart on fire. I mean it, Danny. I want to be more than I've ever been. Whatever's taken from me, I, when it comes to the Lord, I don't want it in my life. And I want God more than I've ever had God because I want to see folks saved. I want to see God change our community. I want to see people off the of drugs, don't you? I want to see people off methamphetamine and off the alcohol. I want to see people off this stuff. I, I want to see people lined up and come into the house of God bumper to bumper with their flashers on. Can't get a seat because not just this church, but every church that's preaching the Word of God. I want them filled with people. I want to see a revolution in our county. I want to see that. Do you want to see that tonight? Because that's what I want to see. And it begins with me. It begins with you. It does. He said, let judgment begin in the house of God. Church, it's up to us. It's up to us. What we do with God is up to us. And I want to be a heart on fire. I'm telling you. I just praise this Lord. I did come to preach tonight. I come to hear Cody preach. But I did come to obey God. Church, I want to come around the altar. We want to go, Lord, in prayer, pray for the service, and then the choir and come sing. And we just pray God to just bless. I want you to remember tonight as we gather around, remember Jason and Sheila. The Sheila came by after church, and Jason had a chance to talk to him. He said, I'm so miserable sitting there on that pew on Sunday. He said, I said, man, I, the ministry's been written on your face for some time, Jason. I said, I saw it all over you. He said, I can't keep sitting there. And I said, brother, you need to be out there preaching. And he said, that's what i got to do. And then Sheila said, I'm going to back him in that. You know, she's had a hard time doing that. She wanted to be here teaching. Uh, she said, here's my key. He said, we're going to hit the road preaching. And said, uh, when we're not preaching, some words, said, we'll come by and visit. I think they're going to help Terry Jones out some of the Keystone as well. He said, Terry has to do that today. But he said, pray for them. So remember, Jason and Sheila, uh, you know, God, God don't call you to, just to let you say it. You know, Danny's found that out. He's going to send you somewhere. He's going to send you somewhere. And, and, and I, I praise God for that. But I want you to pray for Jason and Sheila. He said, I, I, come and just sit on the pew and listen to... Uh, he said, even if I was the preacher, he said, it ain't me out preaching like I should be preaching. He said, God's called me to do work, man. I've not been doing it. He said, I want to start. And so pray for Jason and Sheila and, and remember them. Uh, pray for Sister Krista. I talked to her today. Pray for Krista and God will just be with her and help her. God knows all her needs. So remember her uh, when you pray. Uh, let's just pray one for another tonight. That God will just bless. God will help. Pray for Cody tonight. I pray we'll just pour it out. Uh, God will just speak through him tonight in a mighty way. But let's all gather in around the altar. If you've got a prayer, please let it be made known at this time as you come. So remember, let's remember all those. Remember Hunter tonight is up preaching at Mountain City. First Free Will Baptist up there. So remember Hunter. Anybody else? Barb, remember her. We prayed for her this afternoon. Remember her. Her, her husband on the way out. I, I prayed with her. I said, I'll see you later. He grabbed me by the arm. He said, I can't quit crying. And I said, brother, what's wrong? He said, brother, I cried all the time. He said, I can't quit crying. He said, I couldn't go to church. He said, I cried for the whole service every time I come. I said, brother, you convicted me. He said, I've been baptized. I said, I didn't ask that. And I said, you know the Lord. I said, if you got a head knowledge of the Lord and not a heart knowledge, he said, I'm afraid so. He said, I'll lose cry. He said, I'm not happy. I said, can I tell you what will make you happy? <coughs> Jesus. Get Jesus in your heart. I said, you need to, you need to, I said, you need to submit yourself to Jesus tonight. Commit yourself. And he looked at me, tears were streaming in his face. He said, but I'm not ready. I said, oh, brother, but you don't realize today is the day of salvation. I said, you need to do it right now. Do it while he's knocking. Do it while he's knocking. Do it while he's near. He said, call upon the Lord while he's near, while he can be found. He said, call yes. upon the Lord. So I want you to pray for Raymond tonight. He didn't accept the Lord. I left him. I, I shook his hand and hugged his neck. I said, brother, I'm going to be praying. I said, if it's 3 o'clock this morning, 
I said, you call me. I said, not that I can save you, but I'll come down and pray with you. If you're ready to accept God, let me know. I like to have a call on my phone before the church service ends. I would, boy, what I give to have a call and say, I'm ready to accept the Lord. I'd be down the home door to take more souls right now. I want to pray for you. But pray for Raymond tonight that God is saved. Barb wants to see him saved. Pray for that. Pray for that. Amen. Anybody else got something they need to pray about? Anything at all? Let's, uh, let's remember the, the families in that Rouge tonight who lost uh, one of the officers in shot. Amen. Amen. Uh, we should pray, you know, I think we should pray for all of them. You know, see people and, and like you said on the news, you know, there's so much hatred and everything. I'd like to see that. Amen. Amen. Well, let's pray for those. It, it's frightening, the hatred that people's got. Whether, it, whether it's the cops in blue or it's blacks, it, it, we're all human. You know, all lives matter. As I said last Sunday, we just need to pray that the love of many is waxed cold. Let's pray for our nation that, that we shouldn't see folks just pulling out guns killing each other. It's the devil. I, I told you we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But we can wrestle against powers, uh, uh, spiritual wickedness in high places, powers of darkness. It's the devil. That's all it is. Let's pray for that. Anybody else? I've been praying, Don. I've been praying for a long time. For, you know, some people come to the church and it's here in two weeks. Two of them just came in and I just want to thank God for it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Yeah. Also, remember that young man was up there on my semi cruise this morning. Uh, he did head on. Uh, he was on a motorcycle. Uh, he had that big crowd. Don't know the circumstances there, but this is here. Amen. Let's pray for that. And then, we're Rupert Liz, a young, uh, another person from Perth Parish, he's in Kentucky. Yeah. And he sent me a picture today, and they had on CNN. They, they, they had sent this picture to CNN, and they said, by no means, it was that uh, nobody had messed with this guy, the truck driver, driving down the road. And one of the girl did is he come around the bend and he took he, he looked up and he snapped a picture. And then he laid his phone down because he was driving. And then he didn't know so after he got on down the road, he picked his phone up and he looked and he says the Spirit of God moved upon him and, and, and he looked again and it shows I don't know whether it's an angel. I don't know I, I don't know, but you can see it going through there and, 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 and it was just so yeah, soul leaving. I mean so leaving, but you know, it was you know, and it, it killed that young man, uh, you know, he was on the bike as well, so, you know, just remember that family, you know, there's, there's a lot of things going on, but God's still God. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Any other I pray for Amen. 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 Let's pray for Alicia. Anybody else? My brother, Cody knows them well. Good friends. I just feel the Lord finally. Amen. It's been a long prayer for all of our family. Um, I also pray my father-in-law got diagnosed with cancer, so we moved back from Knoxville to Eastport. And it's been a long battle, and he still can't eat. He's lost 50 pounds. He's on IV nutrition, and he's still not doing good. Let's pray for that. I don't know that he knows the Lord. Let's pray for that most of all. Yeah, let's pray for that. Yes. Oh, yeah. Let's, that, that's the most important thing that people know Jesus. All <coughs> oh, they need to know Jesus. It's really gone. It is. It's the only thing. You'll take care of the rest. Yeah. So let's pray for that. Somebody else go to prayer, please. About a month ago, I asked you guys to pray for a friend of our son, Lisa Maya, who had been diagnosed with cervical cancer. She's been going through chemo. She's having a really, really bad time right now. So we'll just keep her in our prayers. Let's remember that. Pray God move on that. Anybody else? Remember our friend, Alicia Brown, her mother. Amen. Uh, Walter Holmes family, he died a couple of days ago when I was standing in the prayers. Amen. Remember that. Amen. Any others? We all remember uh, Wait for uh, Chris and Danny's wife to come back to her. Amen. I like to see that. Brother. Amen. Remember they said Chris. You know, remember Tana, she's pretty brother. Amen. Remember Tana. Several people commented on the live stream that they like fresh pregnant. Amen. Robin, Johnson. My sister, Robin. Amen. Brandon, I want you to remember John Young. He ain't done real good. I appreciate it. 
Amen. 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 Should be in that she said you never parents and you're already keep all the sticks and then your prayers down if they're going to sit down on the patient so that they're traveling safe. Amen. 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 Any others? I need to thank God for the support of the brothers and family and friends and thank God for that. Amen. Just praise for that. Also I'd like to pray that my teeth don't try to fly out again. They try to fly out about three or four times last night. I sort of prayed pretty well. We'll pray for that. Let's not let's pray that, 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 that God don't let the devil use that. You know, because the devil will use anything. He will. He'll he'll I know I've been there. Name of Jesus. The Lord's showing me some things and I just want to understand it. Amen. Jesus, Lord, touch. Anybody else? Keep praying for back to school bash. It's exciting what God's doing, what He's already done, what He's going to do. Amen. Let's remember Brother Hunter's revival. Amen. The future revival coming to us. Amen. Pray for that. The, the Holy Spirit just be poured out over the whole community. Everywhere that they go. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Pray for Mark. Pray for my grandmother and her sisters as they bring out their dad to us. Amen. Bless them for that. Amen. Just pray for them. Pour it out. Amen. Amen. Pray for them. Anybody else? Thank you. Now we have unspoken. Is. Let's pray. Let's get in touch with God. Let's pray to get done church all night and tell you. And then we'll come up and have some singing. And, and not just singing, but let's worship. Let's lift Him up. Amen. God goes to God and raises Him. Oh, my heavenly brother, God, I pray to God. God, I pray to God. 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 I pray to God.
they thought they had won the war. But soon they would not be a laughing anymore. On the first day of the week, the sun woke up the earth. The caverns of the deep opened up as to their birth. The Lord has erected Savior, beheading in his wings. And now the host of children.
God is mighty to save. Amen. Greatest miracle in the world, salvation. Praise God. You take a black soul, red blood, and wash it white as snow. Glass inside the church. Praise God. That's good stuff. Praise the Lord. His mama asked me to sing this song. I'm going to sing it. We sing this song an awful lot, but it just rings so true on a day-to-day -day basis for most everybody that I know. Praise
how blessed we are. How blessed we are. Isn't God good? All the time. All the time. Yes, He is. I just thank God. It's just overwhelming. I just feel His Spirit moving and stirring. Just grateful to be God's house tonight. Now, I, I was in there thinking about growth is measured in many ways when it comes to the church. Most people measure it in bodies. You know, it's measured, in, and that shows that we God is blessing us with bodies, and that's why we're having to take out walls to give people a little more seating room. Uh, the choir on Sunday morning, it's, it's full of bodies. It's packed, they're packed in there like sardines. And that's good growth. But that's not great growth. You know what a great growth it is? Yes, sir. Oh, I'm telling you, Come church, on. when God's calling people into the ministry, yes, sir. when God's calling people into service, when God's yes, calling people to do things, and say, I preach, I want to be active in the church, and I, I want to do more. And God's calling preachers up out of this church. And you know, I was talking to Chris, and she said, you know, we have many, this, this church has helped to birth many ministers into the ministry. Just in the time that I've been here, but before me, they was, so this church had a lot of preachers that, that, that started here in this church. To me, real growth yep. is when God's calling people to another level. Yes, sir. That's the growth that I'm most pleased with. It's not just one body's taking up space. But when people come in and say, God's calling me to do something, Pastor. And, and, and for the first time in my life, I want, I want to do something for the Lord. And, and I want God, I want to have a ministry. You know, that, that's what God's doing. And whether it, it, it's man or woman or boy or girl, God's calling people up out of this church and they're stepping forward and they're doing something. There are people doing things in this church that if you told them five years ago you were going to be doing that, they said, you're crazy. That's I ain't doing nothing in that church. I, in fact, I won't even be in church in five years. And now they're here and they got a ministry in the church. It's amazing. It's amazing what God's doing. So real growth, I believe, is, is what we're seeing now. God calling people up. And so, you know, I, I just want to get out of God's way and I want to hear what God's got to say because Brody's been in touch with the Lord. He's talked with God. God's given him what to say. And God's going to use our brother tonight. Yep. And so it, it is an honor. And, I, and I'll say, you know, I told you the toughest place you'll ever preach is in front of your peers and in front of your home church crowd. It's a tough place. Your family's there. Everybody, you know, the devil tries to make that all. He puts pressure there. Brother, you just, you just, you just do what God tells you to do. But, but I tell you, you're in a place tonight that everybody loves you. Everybody's on your side. You know, you ain't got to be worried about it. Nobody here wants to see you fall back in your face. They want to see God just absolutely pour it down. And so you just be, a, you just be at home. But I love you. So let's give the Lord a hand. It's Cody. Somebody told me not too long ago, not five years ago, probably not even a year ago, that I'd be standing here behind this pulpit. I'd tell you the wrong to lie. You know, I just, <coughs> I do. And I also, I gonna, like I said, I ain't going to say it try to say that. But I comprehend what it means to stand here. And when God's given me this message, in all honesty, you know, I, was a, I, I the whole time I was like, well, I'm going to have to get up here and I'm going to have to try to justify, you know, why I'm standing here. I'm going to have to justify. I'm going to just I'm gonna here. I'm gonna have to tell you what got me here. God told me not to waste any time with that, so it's just by grace. It's just by love. Amen. 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 All of us. That's Praise what I took. That's what got me here. So, uh, but yeah, I, uh, I can't thank God enough. But to get to start here at Harmony, that's, 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 that's something, you know, about starting a ministry is to get to start, but not only your home church, but church where I know that I, I'm not going to be condemned. I know you're going to sit here trying to nitpick me. I'm not trying, like, say, not trying to look for me and fall on the flat on the face, and if I do so, be it. I don't care. But, uh, but you know, I, I really do. I thank God for that support system and the brothers and family. I truly do. But before we go anywhere, I'd like to uh, go back to God's prayer real quick just, just to say thanks. Yes, Lord. Dear Lord, we love you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Lord God, I 
you think about that is when you try to put a little bit of faith in <laughs> my first school sore from last night, but you try to put a little bit of faith in Satan over here and try to put a little bit of God in here, that don't work. You're gonna have to hate one. You're gonna have to love the other. You're gonna have to put all or nothing in in one or the other. I mean you're gonna either either worship Satan, put all your faith in him or put it all in God. There there is no in between. Yeah, he's not gonna <laughs> He can't really work in the in the middle, you know. It's uh, as I said, you'll hate one, and you'll you'll love the other. And it says over in the book of James, chapter one, about verse six. About in verse six, there's eight. I'm gonna look at that again. It's up to you. And, uh, it says, you know, if a man come to God asking for something, and asking him, and you know, his faith waver, he's like a, a wave of the sea crashing back from forth, back forth. Yeah. And so it says for the man to think not that he'll even receive anything when he comes to God asking and waver and asking that. And that start asking that little bit of faith that's or without all the faith toward God, a little bit of faith toward Satan. And uh, you know, when you think about that, you think that we've all got faith. It's kind of like like stock. You just kinda of all got stock. You've got that amount of faith. It's all just about where you put it. Like I said, you put it in your car, you put it in your finances. Like you trust your finances going what's gonna get you through this year or what get you through your life or what's gonna get put food on the table. You trust that it's your job that's gonna put you know food on the table. You know, right? <laughs> It's or do you even, I mean, or do you put your faith God bless him, Lord. in the doctors when they tell you that that sickness is going to harm you, when that sickness is deadly? You put your faith in them that you know that they know better than God, that they're more powerful than God, or do you even put your faith in the sickness itself that that sickness is more powerful than God, that sickness can't be touched? True, bless him, right? Or do you put the faith in the God, the one that created the body, the one that knows the body, the one that made it, the one that made it out of the dust of the earth? It's I mean, it's it's where where you put your faith. Like I said, I mean, Paul means don't even put your faith in the preachers, really. I mean, I would, oh, y'all don't put faith in my hand. No, no faith. They put all your faith in God. Yeah. And uh, just you. So I mean, you try to look at that almost as well, as a list. You try to look down where where is your faith at? Like I said, is it in the doctors when they tell you that you're sick and they're medicine you can't do it or you're on bed rest for life or what it is? Or do you put faith, you know, like I said, in the sickness itself, or in your finances, that stuff? Or uh, do you put faith in God, in the in, the, in Jesus Christ? That's where the faith is in Jesus Christ, Amen. the Son of God, that all power was that from heaven and earth was given to Him. Amen. You know, the written word. I mean, <laughs> it's honestly God gave me this. It's that's just not real. I want, all jokes aside, I, I had to really hold myself back. I kept wanting to add to it. I want to take away from you know, try to. Man, I feel like I need to be more to it. I feel like I need to be more verses. I need to be more of a, a sermon to it. But it's really not. It's really about where are you putting your faith? Is your faith made perfect? Where, where's your stock in faith? Where does it lie? As a, like I said, that goes back to when you, you believe Satan when he talks. When Satan tells you that you know your family's going to be destroyed or your marriage is going down the road and your health is going down the road. It, I mean, you're. That your church ain't gonna go anywhere. That your ministry ain't gonna go anywhere. That you're not called to do anything. Or if you're putting your your stock of faith in that, then it's not in God. It's in the well. It's in, it's in the wrong God. We'll put it that way. It's in the, the prince of the air. It's it's not in Jesus Christ. And uh, so, like I said, I, I really, all, you know, I was kind of holding myself back. I want to add to it. I felt like it needs more. It needs to be into it. And it's it's simple. It's, you know, left is where your faith lies. That's, he asked me that question. That's where you know, I'm not asking that question. I believe God's asking that question. Is uh, where does your faith lie? You know, do you have faith, a little bit of faith in God, a lot of faith in God, a little bit over here, a little bit there, a little bit in the car, a little bit down the road, uh, wherever it need to be. But, but all the faith needs to be in God. That's where it's going to have to be. Or Jesus Christ. It, yeah. Said you're real, man. That's, that's how faith is made perfect. When it's all, when it's complete, when it's whole. God's all about whole and complete. It's ain't about anything. That's, that's half hard. Anything that's a little bit. And that's, uh, let's see, guys, I'd like to ask everybody right now. I mean, if you just, you know, don't tell me, don't tell anybody. In your hearts, if you just push worship, is your faith lying? Is it, like I said, is it, is it your faith in the preacher? Is it in the, in the church? Is it, or is it, I'm saying, in the doctor? I really feel like God's laying that on my heart. I feel like it's bigger. I feel like somebody's laying a lot of faith in the sickness and the disease and in the doctor. Something made up. Faith there don't belong. 
faith that belongs to God, faith that well, Jesus died for. I mean, it's really right. his. Absolutely. He'd be taking it to Satan. He has no reason to have it. He, that's, uh, I just, I'd like to ask everybody if you, I mean, just, instead of you don't have to tell me, but everybody knows where your faith lies, or put a little bit of faith, too much faith in the car, too much faith in herself, or your or faith in man, or all of the faith, is all of the faith in God, every bit of it, or is any of it, Lord, that we can, that we can move, and, uh, Keep talking, you know. I almost feel like, as I said it up, but I really. It's the same question: Is where's your faith lie? It's all in God, or is it in your sleep? And uh, I feel like I need to ask people where your where your faith lies. I, just, I mean, that's since none of my business. That's when you and God. Are, but I, I do ask everybody. You know, if there's anything, any faith that you're putting in your own places, any any faith that's not not in God, and and you know, said that you've been listening to Satan's voice. You know, trusting Satan's voice, I see trust God's voice. That's how you get that point of moving the stock. That's what I was trying to understand. That's what I was praying about. It's how do you move that faith from Satan? And uh, really, I definitely start with, you know, when Satan says something, know it to be a lie. Start there. No, it don't, don't believe it. Don't, you know, go ahead and start doubting that from the get go. When God says something, go ahead and believe that from the get go. And, uh, Amen, brother. Try it. Listen, that's right. I mean, really, that's, that's, that'd be the best place that God told me to start. That's where He told me personally to start. And I know, I say, I'm, I'm the, you know, when God gave me this message, I, you know, I, thought, I was having a good conversation with God. And I said, God, in all honesty, I said, uh, I said this message, this message like this, is the same, I feel like I'm preaching at people. So I don't ever want to preach at people. God, I want to preach with people. So the, the ground's level is foot of the cross. And, you know, I've had to, he called preach this to me first, and I'm still working on it. He said, I'm not going to sit here and say, I've got all my faith in God. I'd be lying. If I'm trying to get it there. You know, I don't want my faith in my job, my money, or anywhere. I don't want my faith anywhere that doesn't belong. It's God's faith. I want to give it to him. And, uh, so so I have to, to be obedient to God, I have to ask everybody else. I think, well, that's what he told me to do. Just ask everybody else, where's your faith life? Where's your stock of faith life? How can you move it? How can you move it? I don't know your, your personal life. That's how that you can move it where it needs to be and what needs to be moved. I don't know that. I, I do ask that you get closer to that God. Ask God to show you what needs to be moved, where it needs to be. And, uh, because God, he, he just wants to love you. That's all he wants to do. It's the only thing he's asking. But he has to give you permission to do it. And yes, you have to let him in. He's, I mean, he can love you from a distance, and he can never through life, he can try to push you through there. But he can't be in you and, and to, to love you the way that he wants to be, the way that, that, he's, uh, that he desires to be. That's what we were uh, talking this morning about uh, seeing people saved or seeing the, the ministry grow. And it's, uh, yeah. it's the human compassion, human love, you know, it, it's always going to fail. It's made, you know, human love, human compassion, it, it's based off emotions, it's based off of the flesh, it's based off of brain hormones. It's based off of everything that can fail. So we think of our love, our compassion, how much love we, we have love after each other. You know, it, our love doesn't be for the love of God. And that love, the compassion that God has for each of us, how much He wants to love us, Lord. And He's, He's, He wants to love us. That's all, that's all he's asking. He's asking for opportunity to love us and, and to love each and every one of us and call us home. That's, that's uh, so, so I have to be obedient to God. Anybody that's, you know, that's, that questions that God loves them, that God of heaven really loves them, because I know, like a John 3 16, you know, that's one of the verses that's, you, you, you think about that. It's a God from so love the whole world that gives on God some to die for you. And it's kind of, you know, God, God loves everybody, kind of deal. Kind of even that. Uh, I've heard preachers say that. I mean, I've, I've, you know, the, I've even seen it, you know, the movies that Frank Buck was talking about. You know, so it's hard, that preacher said it's hard to comprehend that God loves everybody. To understand that He loves them on an individual basis, that He loves you personally, that, you know, that, that verse, John 3 16, says that He gave His only God Son. You know, He's the only human being in the world. He's the one of the soldiers that pinned to the cross. He was still done it. He was still done it. It was for you. 
That's, I mean, it's hard to comprehend that on an individual level. Uh, you know, saying if God loves us, you think, oh, yeah, He loves us. But thank you, God loves me, loves you. You know, when you start naming names, you start putting pictures faces with the names. That's, uh, that gets a little more personal. And, you know, and that love don't come when, from accepting Christ. He loved you from the moment He created you. Well, he, yes, he knew you before He formed you. And yes, he knew you when, he, when He made this place, He knew when He was going to be here. He knew it was a, it was a chosen generation, when He was going to be here at the time, was the place. And he he loved us then. He loved us from the get go. He loved us when he was out doing everything that <laughs> you can think of, everything that was not with him, everything that was in and against him. When we were loving the other master, when we were serving the other master, not serving him, but he loved us then. That's, the love was still there. But uh, I said I don't want to add any more to the word of God than what He gave me. That's the stuff that I asked. You know, personally, I said, I'm going to do it for myself. I, I, I get down and pray a little bit. He shows me how I can move more faith away from the world, away from Satan, and into Him. That I can have all the faith in Him, and my faith can be made perfect in Him. That all my stalking faith can be put in Him. And uh, I said, uh, I asked the Lord, Amen. You know, I couldn't stand in real way with God. I said, I asked if anybody, you know, let's not let God. I give like God give God the opportunity to love him and he knows that he wants to love him. You can tell when he speaks to your heart with him. I do ask. I actually have bad that he that here it is. I said you don't have to tell me. You don't have to come to the audience where you're set. I pray you today, tomorrow, but I wouldn't wait. I wouldn't wait. I'd make it right now. I, I would do it now. I'd let him love you now. Because uh, it's it's well I'm gonna look right here in the uh, I believe it's first Corinthians chapter two. Yeah, First Corinthians chapter two. Start down at verse nine, and we've all heard uh, we've heard this quoted probably more times than we could ever imagine. It says, "But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, nor hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love Him." And you know, and that tells you a little bit about heaven. You know, we can't comprehend what heaven is going to be like. We can't comprehend what He's made for us, what He's prepared for us. I, you know what? When He gets to fully express His love for us, we can't comprehend. You know, it'll never enter the you know the human mind what heaven has in store for us. But if you look at verse nine, I don't know about you, but I can't find a single place in that verse that says anything about heaven. He said he had to prepare for them to love him. He didn't say we had to wait. He didn't say it had to be twenty years down the road, five years down the road. He didn't say we had to die to get it. He said he prepared for them to love him. I believe it's on the table. I really feel that it's on the table. I like that, brother. But do we believe that? That's it. That's Thank you, Lord. It's powerful, brother. Said I. God called me to preach. I told him I don't know the first thing about preaching. Said I appreciate you preparing with me. Just said I was trying to give you what He gave me. I don't want to add to a word, single word to it. I don't want to take a word, word away from it. But I just feel everybody needs an opportunity for that. And uh, when God's already spoke to him and said that there has to be, there needs to be a, a prayer. To listen. There's people in here that that need a, a, a prayer just to listen to what God's called them to do. But he's dealing with a lot of hearts of Calum. You know, and uh, he called myself and Joe Fish to preach in here last Sunday night when we announced it. And I'm like, well, personally, he's been dealing with me for a while. I know, but but uh, God already told me there's a lot more people in here then that had a lot more calls on the heart. It may, it, it may not be to preach, it may be to teaching these little ministries here and there. And God's showing me little details of it. He's catching little glimpses of it. And I'd like to ask everyone, you know, when we come to the altar, I'd like to ask everyone if we could get together and pray. And if you, if you don't want to say a word, if you could just sit back and listen to what God is wanting you to do, what He's calling you to do. We just sit and listen. We don't have to talk to Him, just listen to what He's wanting us to do. He'll tell us. Amen. He'll tell us. He don't want to keep secrets from us. So, Amen. Praise Joe, that's all I got. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Do we believe, church? If we believe, come, come around and tell God you believe. That He is who He says He is. He'll do what He has said He'll do. Let's believe that. Let's believe that. Let's believe that. I don't want to. Only by thinking of preaching. I'm 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 prea
Oh, I love all that we've got to do. Our coach preached about his hope in my heart tonight, God. Don't you know, God, that I've been faithful in all things. Oh, I, I, I knew you, Father God, but more often times, my faith lacks again. Lord, I pray, Lord God, to help us to believe, God. God is the man in the Word of God. So he said, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Lord, I pray, God, we believe, God, everything we need is on the table. Lord, that I have not seen, nor you heard, nor has it even been in the heart of man. That everything that we need, God, is on the table, I believe tonight. Well, I pray to my sister tonight, I pray to my brothers. Well, I pray, God, you move with them, your lives. I pray, Father God, you use them in the ministry. God, you're calling people up, Father God, to do the ministry of the Lord. And I believe that's real growth, God. I believe, God, that that's the growth, God, that will sustain a church. And God, I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, God, you move upon these men and women. God, tonight, Lord, I pray that our faith would lie in you. Lord, I appreciate my little brother, God. I appreciate the message, God, that you shattered, God, tonight. And Lord, God, I believe we do error in the Lord the Scriptures with the power of the living God. Lord, I pray, Father God, we know, Father God. God, I pray we know you. We trust you. God, we, 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 we would believe, God, that you are who you say you are. Though we believe in the cross. Though we believe in the empty tomb. God, I believe the shared blood of Jesus. I believe, God, that you're going to see your son. substance of things over the world. But that's what faith is, the evidence of things that is not seen. Yet I thank you for faith, God. And I thank you for my brother, God. And I thank you for this service, Lord. Let us not forget this day, God. Let it live on our, our minds forever, God. And I thank you for speaking to your church, God, if we would believe. God, what do we see in our community? God, the only thing that is hindering, Father God, pure revival. The only thing that's hindering, God, true evangelism. God, the only thing that's hindering God, the fire of God from falling, is God, we don't believe. God, it's true. God, it, when it all boils down, Father God, we say we believe. God, we're not the man to watch the man, Father God, go across the tight wire with a wheelbarrow. Oh, we believe that He can walk that wire and push that wheelbarrow. God, when He said, get in it, God, we no longer believe. God, tonight I want to get in the wheelbarrow. God, I want to get in it, God. That, that's the issue right there, Lord. I believe that's what's hindering us, God. I believe that's what's hindering our church, God. Oh, we don't believe. Oh, we don't believe. And I, I want to believe, God. I want to believe in you. I want to believe in your power. I want to believe in your might, God. I want to believe, God, that you are who you say you are. And you'll do what you say you'll do, Lord. God, I want to believe. God, in Jesus' name. Oh, God, all we got to do is only believe. Lord, in Jesus' name, we praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Praise God. Well, I appreciate my brother. I appreciate the Word of God. Praise the Lord. You know, it, 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 it didn't, uh, it didn't need no more. It was just, it, it. Do we believe? Where does our faith lie? Uh, I couldn't help but think about the man that had the boy with the demons in him. As he was preaching. He said he'd seen him tear himself and he'd try to jump off cliffs and drown himself. He watched his child suffer. He said, I took my boy to the disciples and he said, they couldn't heal him. That's us, church. We're faithless. And Jesus said, you're you faithless of perverse generations. And how much harm will I be with thee? And he said, we, you, you, you boys there couldn't heal him. He said, I watched the devil kill him. He said, he's full of demons. And Jesus said, bring me the child. He, he said, do you believe? So God, that's what Jesus asked the man. He said, Lord, I believe. But help me out my unbelief. I believe that's where we're at tonight. 
What I believe, do we believe that people in Carter County can stop methamphetamines and get right with God and fill the churches? Do you believe that? Yep. Do you believe that God can touch cancer? All matter of sickness. Do you yes, believe sir. that today? Yes, Church, we gotta believe. Yes, sir. It all boils down to where, where where is our faith and where does it lie? He's already preached. Where does our faith lie? I ask myself that. I, you know, you, as a pastor, you might you might get on Facebook or you might read something and somebody's put something. And you you read it and immediately your mind goes to a dark spot. And, I say, Lord, the devil's going to use that to tear the church up, or he's going to use that. And oh, I'll, I'll admit it as a pastor. Sometimes I feel a little bit overwhelmed, and I'm like, Lord, this is going to destroy that, and that's going to destroy this. Do I not believe that God is greater? Does God really need me micromanaging the church? Does He really need me micromanaging the church? That's what He asked me. He said, as Tony preached tonight, and I said, Ern, listen. And God fed me. He said, man, I don't need you micromanaging nothing. I don't need you. You don't have to. Yeah, and let me say something. If somebody's comment on Facebook and destroy this church, this church ain't built on nothing to start with. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. That's Amen. the truth. That's what God told you. If somebody's yes. rude comment yes, can destroy this church, then this church ain't built on nothing. Yes, because sir. the Bible said the gates of hell Take shall not be built against you. So God said, I don't need you micromanaging. Where is your faith at? Man, you can't keep things together. You can't fix it all. You know, I, I, I speak in how this message touched me as a pastor. Because a lot of times I have more faith in myself. Oh, did you hear me? <laughs> I have more faith in my abilities and God help me because I am a, I, 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 I'm weak, but He's strong. But I put more faith in me many times than I have in Him. They're all meant to I've got to go in there trying to fix this. Really? You're going to fix it? You can't fix it. What makes me think I can fix it? I can't fix your life, your home, your marriage, your family. I've never fixed nobody's nothing. If it was fixed, God. it was fixed by God. Amen. He might use you as a mediator. He might use you as a vessel. But in the end of the day, He's the fixed one. Amen. So this message is touching me. Do we believe? Do we believe we can see a revival and break out Carter can't shake this place? Yes. Do you believe that tonight? Church, you know, I, I think about the, the preacher, the missionary that walked in and preached the message very, very similar to Cody's tonight. And he told those African people in a jungle, he said, I believe God can do anything. He said, God's not limited. He said, I believe. The next night, they brought him in a man on a stretcher that was dead. Truly, he died that afternoon. They brought him in on a stretcher. I'm not making this up. The devil said, now what you going to do, preacher? You told him you believe God can do anything. You said last night he could raise the dead. Now what you going to do? He's dead. And he said, I, I bowed my head and I said, God help me. The, the missionary did. And there's a big black guy got out of the back of the church, older man. He walked to the front and he was whispered in the preacher's ear. I said, only believe. The preacher laid his hands on the man and said, in the name of Jesus, I know that you are the Lord of the resurrection. And I pray, Father God, you bring this man back at this very moment and let him live. <clears throat> he did. He got up off the stretcher and he lived. Church, that's the God I'm talking about. Do you believe in that God? Amen. 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 I appreciate coming. It was. It might be a simple message, but I tell you what, it, it's profound. Because I don't believe we believe like that. I believe we say we do. Because I believe we believe it like we say we believe. Well, I tell you what, we'd see some things that would be unfathomable around our world today. I believe that because he said the faith of a grain of mustard seed would move mountains. I mean, think about that. It, it moved mountains. So, church, we need to believe. We need to believe that God's going to do something in Carter County. We believe that God's going to do something in Tennessee, in the United States of America. We need to believe that God's going to change our home, our families, our marriages. We need to believe that God's a big enough God to protect the church. We need to believe that God's a big enough God to protect our home. We need to believe that God's a big enough God to protect my life. He is. I believe that tonight. Nobody can come in my house and blow my family away now unless God Almighty ordains it. That's right. God Almighty wants me to bear a grace 
go meet Jesus tonight. I mean, somebody can walk in there and take us. But I'll tell you this. If God Almighty don't want them to, they don't want to get through Him. I, mean, I believe that tonight, there. I believe that. Church, I believe. I appreciate Cody. I pre that wonderful first message. Uh, I mean, that's, that's a message to stand on right there. If you'll continue to believe in God and in what God can do through you in your ministry, you ain't got nothing to worry about. And you put stock in Cody. If you put stock in somebody else. It'll surely let you down. I've been there. I have put stock in myself. But I thought old Random was going to walk in there and get her done. And I found out I would fall flat on my face. If I preach, it's God. So I appreciate Cody. Tonight, I, I believe this. Maybe you're here and you say, Preacher, I, I, I don't really believe. I don't believe upon the Lord. I don't even know the Lord is my Savior. I, I don't believe. I haven't believed, but I want to believe. Maybe you're like the man in the Bible who said, I believe, but he'll tell my unbelief. But I believe somebody here needs a touch from the Lord. And, and there, maybe there's a struggle now. Maybe you've never been saved. Maybe you, you've been saved and you walked away and you, you're backslidden. Maybe you're a Christian and whatever it is is whooping your tail. And I know we've already prayed. And I know we come around the altar. And I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this for another reason, but God said to. I believe God's still dealing with somebody. Would you believe in the Lord tonight? Would you would you believe in him? Would you believe tonight that he is who he says he is? Do you believe in the power of the cross? Do you believe in the power of an empty tomb? Do, do you believe in the power of the shed blood? Do you believe in the power of the stripes that he bore? Do you believe? And I'm not re-preaching this message. I'm just asking you again, reiterating. Do you believe? Where does your faith lie? So, with every head bowed for this minute, you don't even have to stand up. Eyes closed. You say, Preacher, you're speaking directly to me. Cody's speaking directly to me tonight. I'm not going to come teach you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call your name out. You say, Preacher, I'm not ready to meet the Lord in the shape that I'm in. And I'd like for you to remember me in your prayers when you pray. I'm not ready to meet the Lord. Would you just lift your hand up? I'm not ready to meet the Lord. Thank God for that hand of honesty. I'm not going to come get you. I'm not going to embarrass you. But I'm not ready to meet the Lord. I'd like to believe upon Him. I'd like Him to forgive my sin. I'd like my sins forgotten. I'd like to start over. I'd like to be a new creature in Christ. I'd like for Him to change me from the inside out. I want to believe in His parent. I want to believe He is who He says He is. I want to believe, preacher, but right now, I'm not at that place, and I, and I realize that, and I need help. Would you pray for me? Would you just lift your hand up? Thank God for that hand of Hands going up. I need God's help. I, I, I know I don't believe. You said, Preacher, I feel my heart beating out on my chest. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm going to bust. There's a lot of pressure weighing in on me tonight. What do I got to do? What do I got to do? You just got to admit that you're a sinner. You got to admit that you need help. You can't get help to admit that you need help. Would you admit that you need help and say, I need help and I don't want to live my life the way I'm living anymore. I'm so tired of living the way that I'm living. I'm tired of feeling the way that I'm feeling. I want to believe in a power greater than me. I want to believe there's a power that's got me in the palm of His hand. I want to believe there's a God that really cares about me. I want to believe that tonight. I want to believe that God's going to fix my life. I want to believe that now. If you, if you want that, would you just step out of your pew? We'd like to gather around you and pray tonight. Would you just step out? Those hands that went up in the air. Would you step out tonight and say, I want God to change me tonight. Tonight, I want to leave believing. I want to leave believing. Would you step out of your pew? You said, preach, I'm scared to death. I'm embarrassed. I don't know everybody. It, it makes no difference. I want you to put all those excuses out of your mind. And I want you to walk out of this church as a believer. You say, I want to believe. I want to believe. I want to believe. Come. We'll pray with you. There's nothing embarrassing about it. You say, I'm almost persuaded. I'm almost persuaded. Don't be almost persuaded. Just be fully persuaded. Say, I want to live, leave a believer. I want God to change my mindset. I want to believe again. I want to know that God's got my life. I want to know that He's got a plan for my future. I want that tonight. Would you come? Right now, would you come? Your life is going to impact somebody else's. God's going to use you. Would you come?
and I don't understand. I don't understand what the God does. You can believe a believer. You can lead in what God does. You can't be worth I know when you sit there, you got to be honest with you. He loves you. He's got a plan for you. Jeremiah 29, 11, he said he's got a plan to prosper you, give you a future. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God loves you that much? Today, he's got a plan, oh, a big plan for your life, a plan to change your life, a plan. I want you to know you're not alone. You've never been alone. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never send you. I'll go with you. Always in the vision to the world. What, what is it about the Jesus? What can we really pray that God change? Have you ever been saved? Never been saved. You never know. You never know Jesus. All oh, this. Thank time. you. I want to read to you what it says in the scripture. I want to read this to you. Romans. Romans. In thy praise is all of us. Thank you, Lord. Listen, listen. That if thou shalt praise the Lord, thou shalt praise the Lord. Lord, Lord, she knows. 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 Lord, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for coming back to me. Father, Lord, I thank you, Father, Lord, you can see the hurt, Lord, you realize. Father, that it's so much better to be a child than a king, Father. Lord, thank you, Father, that you come to me, Father. Father, thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord, for what you're going to do. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you just come down more to the mother, Father. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you bless the Lord, and fill her with the Holy Ghost, Father. this message that God through this message Lord as he asked her where does your faith lie and God she said I realized that it wasn't in you her faith wasn't in you God it might have been in this world it might have been in her family it might have been in, in her job but tonight God her faith now has been changed and it's been put into you and I thank you Lord that Cody was obedient to the will of God and this is seeds of his ministry, God. Already been sown. So when the devil comes by and says, Well, you made a mistake. He can say, Hey, say you get behind me. In the name of Jesus. For Lord God, I thank you. Lord, that through his message tonight, God's souls were saved. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You got your church name here. You come here all the time. We love you. We love you. Praise the Lord. We'll be glad to baptize you. We'll baptize next Sunday. We got five this morning. You may see.
six. It might be more, I don't know. But we love you here. And I'm proud of you. You, you walk in unbelieving, I'm going to make it hell. You walk out a child of the king. You're his, you're his daughter now. And you're walking out here and if you were to die tonight, you're going to go to heaven. That's the hope we have in Christ. And, 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 and the, the, the moment, let me say this. I don't know your past. You know your past. Let it go. Who you was or what you was, you ain't that person no more. You are a child of the king. And he's right. And he's for God and you let him go. But not all that old. That book of your life, God took a hold of the chapters that was written before him They're and gone. he tore them out and he threw them away. They're gone. And tonight you start writing a new chapter. And, and that, that's what's going to be in that book. And, 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 we, and when you fail him, and that time will come that you fail him. You just fall on your face and say, God, I failed you, but I want to do better. Because we all fail him. Yes. We all fail him. Yes. But I love you. And I want you to know you're amongst friends and you've got a family here yes. now. Yes. Brothers and sisters in the Lord. And, and, and you've got a whole church. I love you. I, I thank you for your courage walking up here. Amen. Thank God. Let's give the Lord a hand. I'm not beside myself. <laughs> Brandon, I just had to say, me and her sitting back there fussing in church. <laughs> because she told me, she said, I've got to leave. I've got to get out of here. I can't stay. I said, Miss, you're not going to know worse. I said, you stay right here where you belong. And the devil didn't want you to stay here. He, he had another plan. I'll tell you some old Satan. He has a, he had a plan for your life. And it, it, it didn't include this. You're different now. You can see it every day. When you feel the weight lift up off of you, you can't describe it to somebody. I can't tell you how it feels, but now you know. It feels like all that weight that you walked up here with, when you feel like it's so heavy, that you, you're in quicksand, all of that bleeds and you feel like you're as light as air. People walk up with no smog, but when they get up, you can see that green. You can see it in their eyes. To see Samantha's whole, her whole countenance changed this morning. Her whole countenance. She's been changed all day, just smiling. The count, I, saw, I saw that countenance on her. Do you count? She troubled me. There was something about when I was around her, I was troubled. I thought, Lord, there's something about Savannah that troubles me, Lord. And, and it was it was it was it was knowing that there was something that wasn't right with God inside of her. And, and that she was a good person. I, I mean I felt that from the get-go, had a heart of gold. But there was something missing to this morning. Yes. I feel different now about her. There's a day you say, what do you feel here? The Holy Spirit. It bears witness with itself. The Spirit in me is the same Spirit in her. Aren't you glad, church, uh, we have a God that can take a black soul, wash it as white as snow, and blood, right yes, make it as we go out, and make you one of His children? It's mind-blowing. Andrew, it's mind-blowing what God can do. I thank God. I thank God for your obedience. You'll, you'll lead others to the Lord. Don't be ashamed to tell you where you go. I got saved tonight. That's what the world's at me. You tell them. Jesus loved me enough to die for me. And I believe in him. And he changed me. He changed me. Anybody got a testimony? I, I said, well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm like a banjo string, just wound up <laughs> and tight. Uh, anybody? As a teacher, I have to give tests. Not only my informative and formal tests, but we have to give state mandated tests. That's something that's required of our students. And God tests us. He tests our faith to yes. see if we have the faith in Him. You may test it by sickness. You may test it by a wayward child or a wayward family member. You may test your faith by the loss of a job. You may test your faith by so many things. And if we need to count it a blessing when He does that. When He gives us that test of faith because then that helps us to grow and to grow closer to Him and to have faith in Him and our faith grows. Amen. Amen. And when, when that test comes, just believe. Just believe. You may not understand the test. Just believe. How do you know you have to if you don't go through it? Just believe. I don't understand a whole lot about God. He's told me there, he's talking about it. The, the whole plan of God. I don't understand. I don't see how He can give His Son to die. I don't see how He could, when He created man, know what this going to do. Me and her turned around, we're around that at Betty's Burger Hut this afternoon. Said at Betty's Burger Hut, eating chicken wings. And, uh, and we were sitting there talking. And 
She said, I don't understand how God could go through with it, Brandon, and make man. Knowing that the only explanation of God, let me tell you what it is, that He wanted a family that bad. That God wanted children. That he would go ahead and go through with it, knowing that he had to give his son to die, yep. but that he wanted a family. That a family to live with him one day for eternity. Yep. We're, we're that family. And it keeps growing. And it keeps going. How many churches they got to see six souls? One rededicated. And one rededicated. Six souls saved, one rededication to the family of God. How many right. other churches got to see that in the United States? Now, overseas in my sight, day, Korea. They're, they're one of the fastest growing Christian nations around. Truly. Believe that or not. But they might see nobody. They might see 20 or 30 or 40 or 100 today. I don't know. But in America, Carter Kemp. Kemp, we saw six saved in one rededication. I thank God. We, we baptized, what, 14 in the past three weeks, and now we got six more. So it'd be 20 people. <laughs> think about that, church. So we're seeing God do things we've never seen before. We're not in the... We've prayed for this revival. We're in the midst of it. We're in the midst of God changing things. We're in the midst of God turning things. What's next? I don't know, but God does. Yep. Somebody else tonight got something they need to say or do for the Lord before we close. You know, it's funny that she talks about tests. About four years ago, I went in for my first colonoscopy. I was 19 years old. And I went in and they thought I had Parkinson's disease. And they said, there's no
Testimonies of how God used 